Hello, everybody. I'm back. Well, I got relocated. I'm staying at a place a little cheaper. I don't have to work as hard. Uh, hopefully, I'll have more time for some Bible study. So, um, those of you that have been praying for me, I really appreciate it. Thank you very much. Um, and those of you that like to follow me just so that you can report me to YouTube, well, one day you're going to kneel before Jesus. Just remember that. I may not be his best servant, but what can I tell you? All right, this Bible study is going to be on prayer, specifically the Lord's Prayer. Uh, you know, a lot of people don't realize it. There's a lot of meat in the Lord's Prayer. Now, there's two versions of the Lord's Prayer. Uh, there's the one that the so-called Protestants like to use, and there's the one that the so-called Catholics like to use. We're going to cover both of them, and then uh, we're going to—I'm going to break them down. You know, the entire Bible is good for studying and learning, but the words of Jesus should be especially important to us. You know, one thing that people don't get, they believe that the majority of the world believes that man can become God. After all, this is what the Hindus teach uh, with their nirvana. Uh, the Buddhists teach this. Um, the Japanese, when they used to do their um, kamikaze pilots, they believed that when they died in service to the emperor, that they were to become as gods, to become gods. And, you know, the thing is, they believe that man can become God. And yet these same people will deny that God became man and walked the earth, and had a name in the Greek called Jesus, who is the Christ. That's the difference between Orthodox Christianity and the rest of the religions of the world. Can we become gods? Or did God become man to redeem us from sin and death? That's a good question. What are you going to do with Jesus? Is Jesus just another created being? I mean, the Mormons teach that Jesus is the brother of Satan. Just another created being, just like Satan. You know, and I always ask them this question. Do you really want Satan's brother as your savior? Really? You want Satan's brother as your savior. Hmm. And then you got the Jehovah's Witless. That's W-I-T-L-E-S-S. -S. Uh, thank you, Super William. Um, but there are the Jehovah's Witnesses. Uh, they don't have their wits about them. They teach that Jesus is just a created being. But... The Bible clearly declares, my King James Bible clearly declares that God created all things, and then it says that Jesus created all things. Now, I wasn't very good with math, but when I took algebra, I learned that if A equals B and B equals C, that means A equals B, which equals C. So if God created everything and Jesus created everything, that means that Jesus is God in the flesh. Most people don't realize it. Jesus had a dual nature. He was God and he was man. So sometimes he operated in the realm of being as God. Sometimes he operated in the realm of being a man. He was hunger a hungered, he, he, had, he got hungry just like we did. He got thirsty just like we did. I'm sure he had the same physical urges that 
men of his age did, and yet he never sinned. And he had to do this to redeem us from the curse of sin. We had to have a perfect sacrifice. And since no man is perfect, Jesus had to be perfect to be our sacrifice. So instead of sacrificing a sheep, Jesus became the sacrificial lamb on the Passover. But I don't want to make this a, you know, many, many hour study. I'm still, uh, everything I own is in a box or a bag or a barrel or bucket. That's a lot of bees, huh? And uh, I just thought, well, you know, I need to get my, uh, another study out there on, you know? And, uh, I mean, I really appreciate all the prayers and encouragement I've gotten through the years from everybody. So, with that said, let's go and take a look. All right, let's take a look at the book of Luke, chapter 11. Uh, verse 1. And it came to pass that as he, Jesus, that as he was praying in a certain place, when he ceased, one of his disciples said unto him, now here it is, Jesus, uh, the Jehovah's Witnesses will say, see, see, Jesus was praying to the Father, so he's, he's not God, because then you got God praying to God. Well, the thing is, you've got God clothed in human flesh. He's being an example to us. You know, he lived the kind of life that each of us should be uh, living had it not been for the fall and for sin. So keep that in mind. Jesus has a dual nature. I mean, let's face it. No man could have raised Lazarus from the dead. Now, the Kabbalah, the people that study the Kabbalah, they think they can. They don't even think God is anything special. They just think he's a master mus magician, not musician, but magician. They think that if they knew as much about the Kabbalah as um, God the Father, they would be just as powerful as him. That if they knew the secret words of what to speak, they could create the universe just like he did. And believe me, this is what they believe. I, uh, it's unbelievable. And it came to pass that as he was praying in a certain place, when he ceased, one of his disciples said unto him, Lord, teach us to pray as John also taught his disciples. So, it doesn't tell you which one of the disciples, but they asked him, Lord, teach us to pray. Verse 2, And he, Jesus, and he said unto them, When ye pray, say, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, as in heaven, so in earth. Give us this day by day our daily bread. And forgive us our sins. For we also forgive everyone that is indebted to us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. So, we could break this down just a little bit, you know. So, Let's see. Our Father which art in heaven. Contrast that to the Satanist who, whose father was cast out of heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Haven't you ever heard people saying, oh, GD or, um, you know, GD it? His name is Hallowed. And then it says, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, as in heaven, so on earth. Now, you got to realize, in the book of Revelation, it said that there was war in heaven. 
Michael and his angels fought against um, the dragon and his angels, and they were cast out. Let's take a look at that real quick. All right, Revelation 12, and I guess we'll start verse 7. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. And the dragon fought and his angels and prevailed not. Neither was their place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out. That old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world, he was cast out into the earth. And his angels were cast out with him. Isn't that interesting? So you've got your father in heaven. And then the Satanists have their father who is somewhere else. Okay. Uh, verse 3. Give us day by day our daily bread. Hmm. Obviously, we need bread, not necessarily bread, bread, but, you know, food on a daily basis to keep our physical bodies healthy. But what about spiritual bread? In Matthew chapter 4 and verse 1, this is Jesus being tempted of the devil. Then was Jesus led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterward and hungered. I'll tell you what, people. Fasting 40 days and 40 nights, that is, that's, that's bordering... That's, that's getting awful close to starvation there. And, you know, there are... A lot of people give Mike Hoggard a, a lot of grief because of the uh, numbers thing in the Bible. But I tell you what, there are certain numbers that pop up in the Bible a lot. Like the, the number 12, the number 10, 40. You know, uh, 40 days and 40 nights. Where else did we read about that? Uh, you know, 40 days and 40 nights, hmm, the flood of Noah, right? 40 days and 40 nights, it rained. Well, Jesus fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. He was afterward and hungered. And when the tempter came to him, and he said, yeah, here it is, you got Satan quoting scripture to Jesus. If thou be the Son of God, Command that these stones be made bread. Okay, well, he's getting ready. Uh, and Jesus, But he answered and said, Jesus speaking, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Then the, temple, uh, then the devil taketh him, him into the holy city, and setteth him on a pinnacle of the temple, and saith, uh, let's see. And sitteth him on a pinnacle of the temple, and saith unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down, for it is written. Uh -huh. Satan's getting ready to quote scripture. Satan knows scripture better than most so-called believers or churchgoers or whatever. What you, what, people that call themselves Christians. For it is written, He shall give his angels charge concerning thee, and in their hands shall they, they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against a stone. So he said, if thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down. So he's got him up on the top, the top of the temple. And he's saying, oh yeah, if you're the Son of God, jump down. Because the angels are going to pick you up, right? He shall give thy his angels charge concerning thee, and in their hands shall they bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash 
thy foot against a stone. Jesus said unto him, It is written again, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Again the devil taketh him up into an exceeding high mountain, and showeth him all the kingdoms of the world, and the glory of them. My note, I bet you the glory of those kingdoms pale, horribly pale in, um, in comparison to where Jesus came from, which is heaven, right? And showeth him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them, and saith unto him, All these things will I give thee, if thou wilt fall down and worship me. Then said Jesus unto him, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Then the devil leaveth him, and behold, angels came and ministered unto him. So, Matthew 4, 4, But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Now, please remember, Jesus, at, on at least two occasions, took bread and multiplied it. Now, I'm not sure if this particular instance was before or after he had done that. Personally, I believe it, he had already done that, but without going into a lot of details, I just want to read uh, Matthew chapter 16, starting in verse 1. And just remember, Pharisees and Sadducees are two different denominations of the Jews. And if you, all of your Talmudic, all your Jews that study the Talmud are the modern direct descendants of the Pharisees. Now, the Sadducees were the keepers of the temple. And when the temple was destroyed in 70 AD, when God got tired of them doing animal sacrifices, and uh, he was trying to send them a message, hey, my son, I sacrificed and shed his blood, and you're mocking him by doing your little temple sacrifice. And he sent at least two Roman legions to uh, put an end to that in 70 AD. The temple was destroyed. The Sadducees pretty much died out when that happened because they didn't have anything to do. They were the keepers of the temple. I don't know if the Sadducees became Pharisees, but the, uh, the Sadducees basically were the Torah keepers. They were the ones, if you don't know what the Torah is, it's the first five books of the, of the Bible. Uh, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. Leviticus is for the Levitical priesthood. Aaron and Moses were Levites. And that the book of Leviticus was the institution, uh, uh, how they instituted temple worship. They were the original Torah keepers. But they didn't believe anything outside of the five books of Moses. They didn't believe the Psalms. They didn't believe the book of Isaiah. They didn't believe the book of Jeremiah. They didn't believe any of the minor prophets. They didn't believe the book of Jonah. But the Pharisees did, to an extent, anyway. So, so without further ado, but just remember, Pharisees and Sadducees are Jews. And many, many, many of your modern-day Jews are direct, they believe directly what the Pharisees of old believed. So let's read Matthew chapter 16, starting in verse 1. The Pharisees also with the Sadducees came, and tempting, desired him that he would show them a sign from heaven. So here it is, the Jews are coming, they're, they're tempting Jesus. Oh, show us a sign from heaven. Signs and wonders. Doesn't that sound just like the uh, charismatics? Oh, yeah, we got to have signs and wonders. Let's go see a Benny Hinn uh, show, you know? That he would show them a sign from heaven. He answered and said unto them, Whether it is evening 
oh, I'm sorry, when it is evening, ye say, it will be fair weather, for the sky is red. And in the morning, it will be foul weather today, for the sky is red and lowering. O oh, ye hypocrites. Wow, Jesus just called the, the Jews hypocrites? O oh, ye hypocrites, ye can discern the face of the sky, but can ye not discern the sign of the times? A wicked and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign, and there shall no sign be given unto it but the sign of the prophet Jonas. And that's Jonah. And, and Jesus is letting them know. Just like Jonah was three days and three nights in the, the belly of the whale, so will the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. Okay? And I could prove that to you, but... Uh, Let's see. A wicked and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign, and there shall not not there shall no sign be given unto it but the sign of the prophet Jonas. And he left them and departed, and when his disciples were come to the other side, they had forgotten to take bread. Okay? So here it is, they're saying, Oh, we forgot to buy some bread. Then Jesus, verse 6, Then Jesus said unto them, Take heed. In other words, listen up, people. Take heed and beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees. And what's leaven? Yeast. That's what makes bread, bread rises, right? And they reason among themselves, saying, It is because we have taken no bread. Jesus shaking his head. Head. Oh, oh, wait, wait, never mind. Which when Jesus perceived, he said unto them, O oh, ye of little faith, why reason ye among yourselves because ye have brought no bread? Ah, oh, you guys are idiots. Don't you understand? Oh, I'm sorry, that's the Bob paraphrase. Do ye not yet understand, neither remember the five loaves? Okay, so this is after Jesus multiplied the thing. We're going to see it right here. Do ye not yet understand, neither remember the five loaves of the five thousand, and how many baskets ye took up? Neither the seven loaves of the four thousand, and how many baskets ye took up? In other words, he fed thousands of people with just a couple loaves of bread. Twice. At least twice. Okay? Do ye not understand, neither remember the five loaves of the five thousand, and how many baskets ye took up? Neither the seven loaves of the four thousand, and how many baskets ye took up? How is it that ye do not understand that I spake it not to you concerning bread? I'm not talking about bread, you idiots. That ye should beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees. Beware the leaven of the Jews. That's what he's saying. Verse 12, then understood they how that he bade them not beware of the leaven of bread, but of the doctrine, the beliefs, the religion of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees. I once had a so-called Messianic Jew tell me that the book of Matthew was originally written in Hebrew, and the pagan Greeks totally turned this into an anti-Semitic book by mistranslating it. And basically, all this stuff, he, he, would, he would tell you, all this is wrong. Jesus said, verse 12, Then understood they how that he bade them not beware of the leaven of bread, but of the doctrine of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees. Beware of the doctrines of the Jews. Plain and simple, people. And well, let's keep going. Bread, right? So give us this day our daily bread, right? Well, let's go to the book of Mark, chapter 14 and verse 22. Now, this is the, uh, the Last Supper. And as they did eat, Jesus took 
bread and blessed and break it and gave to them and said, Take, eat, this is my body. And he took the cup and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and they all drank of it. And he said unto them, This is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many. Verily I say unto you, I drink no more of the fruit of the vine until that day that I drink it new in the kingdom of God. I bet you at the marriage supper of the Lamb, he'll be drinking the fruit of the vine. And the Jews will tell you, uh, or the uh, Hebrew roots people will tell you, oh, well, this is my blood of the renewed testament or covenant. Uh, you know, you guys could, didn't keep the law the first time, but this time we're going to keep it. No, sorry. Law keeping didn't save nobody. Keeping Passover and keeping the Sabbath doesn't save anyone. It's faith in Christ alone and how he kept the Passover and how he kept the Sabbath. Now, I'm, now, I'm not saying we shouldn't do those things. I'm not saying that at all. But it's our faith in Christ that saves us. It's not a renewed covenant. It's the new covenant. And you know why it's new? Because the old one was no good. Well, let me explain something. There was nothing wrong with the old covenant. It's just that imperfect man and his sin nature couldn't keep it. We couldn't keep the law. It was impossible for us to keep the law. You ever see a five-year-old kid stole a cookie out of the cookie jar and you go, Little Timmy, what happened to the cookie that was in the cookie jar? I don't know. Did you eat that cookie? No, I didn't, I didn't eat that cookie. Lied stole five years old already broke the law and if you broke one law you broke them all you are guilty under the penalty of sin and death and i'll tell you what that's why people that are were full of sin that know they're forgiven that's why they were just so overjoyed knowing that they're forgiven. All right, let's keep, uh, let's read some more. All right, turn to John, book of John, chapter 6. Uh, we're going to start in verse 22. The day following, when the people which stood on the other side of the sea saw that there was none other boat there save the one whereinto his disciples were entered, and that Jesus went not, with the disciples into the boat, but that his disciples were gone away alone. Howbeit there came other boats from Tiberias nigh unto the place where they did eat bread. After that the Lord had given thanks. When the people therefore saw that Jesus was not there, okay, um, neither his disciples, they also took shipping and came to Capernaum seeking for Jesus. Okay? And when they found him on the other side of the sea, they said unto him, Rabbi, when comest thou thither? Jesus answered them and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Ye seek me, not because ye saw the miracles, but because ye did eat of the loaves and were filled. In other words, you're not hanging out with me to look at the the works of God, you just want your belly full. Okay? I mean, that's, you know, ye seek me not because ye saw the miracles, but because ye did eat of the loaves, you know, the bread, and were filled. Labor not for the meat which perisheth, but for the meat which endureth unto everlasting life, which the Son of Man shall give unto Unto you, for him hath God the Father sealed. Then said they unto him, 
what shall we do that we might work the works of God? Jesus answered and said unto them, This is the work of God, that ye believe. This is the work of God, that ye believe on him whom he hath sent. How's that? How hard is that, right? Verse 28. Again, let's read this again. Then said they unto him, What shall we do? So what are we going to do that we might work the works of God? What do we got to do? Jesus answered and said unto them, This is the work of God, that ye believe. This is the work of God, that ye believe on him whom he has sent. You know, you think about it. They said, He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. And he that believeth not the Son hath not life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. Right? So this is the work of God, that ye believe on him whom he hath sent. They said therefore unto him, What sign showest thou then that we may see and believe thee? What dost thou work? Our fathers did eat manna in the desert, as it is written. Remember in the days when Moses was taking Israel through the wilderness uh, in the, the desert? The desert. What are you going to eat in a desert? Nothing. Sand. Scorpions. What lives in the desert? Not much. They said, therefore unto him, What sign showest thou then that we may see and believe thee? What dost thou work? Our fathers did eat manna in the desert, as it is written. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. See, that's what, that's what manna was. It was bread from heaven. Verse 32. Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Moses gave you not that bread from heaven. But my Father giveth you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he which cometh down from heaven. See, Jesus, Jesus was God in the flesh. He came down from heaven willingly. Satan was cast out. There's a difference. Unless you're a Mormon, then you think Jesus is Satan's brother. Uh. For the bread of God is he which cometh down from heaven and giveth life unto the world. Then said they unto him, Lord, evermore give us this bread. And Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. But I said unto you that ye also have seen me and believe not. All that the Father giveth me shall come to me, and him that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out. For I came down from heaven not to do mine will, mine own will, but the will of him that sent me. And this is the Father's will which sent me, that of all which he hath given me, I should lose nothing, but should raise it up again at the last day. And this is the will of him that sent me, that everyone that seeth the Son and believeth on him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up at the last day. Wow. Jesus is going to raise you up on the last day and you're never going to hunger and you're never going to thirst. Jesus is the bread of life. Period, people. Believing on him. That's the bread of life. All right, let's go back to Luke chapter 11, the Lord's Prayer. So let's take a look at that real quick. 
Oh, let's see. And it came to pass as he was praying in a certain place when he seized one of his disciples, said unto him, Lord, teach us to pray as John also taught his disciples. And he said unto them, When ye pray, say, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done as in earth, uh, as in heaven, so on earth. Give us this day by day our daily bread. Right? So we need bread for our physical bodies, but we also need bread for our spiritual bodies, I guess you could say. And forgive us our sins. You ever ever hear the Torah keepers uh, ever talk about them having sins? They act like they don't commit any sins. They oh well, we we keep the law. But but Jesus said, and forgive us our sins. For we also forgive everyone that is indebted to us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Now, there is a second witness to this. It's in Matthew chapter 6, verse 1. Now, heed means to listen. And alms is uh, when you're doing alms, you either give somebody money or you're giving them something. Um, for example, if somebody was, um, it was cold in winter and they didn't have a, a warm coat, giving them a warm coat would be an alm. Um, if they hadn't eaten in a week, giving them food to eat would be an alm. If somebody's running around with no shoes and you gave them a pair of shoes, that's alms. If you gave them money, that's alms too. You know, basically an alms is like charity. Think of that. So, all right. Take heed that ye do not your alms before men to be seen of them. Hmm. In other words, don't be getting up on a stage on the TV. Yeah, I come what you know, all these, uh, these charities like uh what was it muscular dystrophy jerry lewis used to get up every year uh oh yeah we're gonna be we're, we got this charity going send us money we're gonna help people with muscular dystrophy of course jerry lewis didn't tell people that uh, they were paying him a million dollars a year um to do that show can you imagine getting paid a million dollars to do a one-day show can you imagine that really you know, everybody thought he was doing it for free. No, he wasn't. So, take heed that you do not your alms before men to be seen of them. Otherwise, ye have no reward of your Father, which is in heaven. Hmm. Don't do charity in front of people to be seen of them. Otherwise, you're not going to get a reward of your Father which is in heaven. Therefore, when thou doest thine alms, do not sound a trumpet before thee. Do, do, do! You know, and uh, sound the trumpet, everybody looks. Oh, look at look at him over there. He's he's given that, that beggar some money. Oh, what a nice guy, right? Yeah, that's, listen to what Jesus said. Therefore, when thou doest thine alms, do not sound a trumpet before thee. As the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets. As the hypocrites do in the synagogues. Hypocrites do in the synagogues. Who hangs out in the synagogues? I'll give you three guesses. Christians? No. Muslims? No. Uh, Jews? Don't do as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, that they may have the glory of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But when thou doest alms, let not thy left hand know what thy right hand doeth. In other words, don't let your right and your left hand know what the other one's doing, right? 
that thine alms may be in secret, and thy father which seeth in secret himself shall reward thee openly. Mm. Now, when and when thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are. Where were those hypocrites? In the synagogues, right? For they love to pray standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the streets that they may be seen of men. Ooh, that's twice that Jesus said use synagogues and hypocrites in the same breath. Twice. Hmm. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet, and when thou hast shut thy door, pray to thy Father which is in secret, and thy Father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. Good advice, huh? Jesus is no dummy. But when ye pray, use not vain repetitions as the heathen do. For they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. You know what some vain repetitions are? What I always thought? The rosary. Hail Mary, full of grace. Hail Mary, full of grace. Hail Mary, 30, uh, full of grace. Why are you praying to Mary? Is Mary God? Is Mary... Jesus said, you know, pray to your Father in heaven. He didn't say pray to Mary, did he? Did Jesus say pray to Mary anywhere? No. And I've actually heard Catholics saying, pray the rosary. Really? Hail Mary, full of grace. Hail Mary, full of grace. Hail Mary, full of grace. Uh, but, but when you pray, use not vain repetitions as the heathen do. For they think that shall, they shall be heard for their much speaking. But not, but not ye therefore like, be not ye therefore like unto them. For your Father knoweth what things ye have need of before ye ask him. Yeah, the Lord knows we need a warm coat in the winter. He knows we need food to survive. Verse 9. After this manner, therefore, pray ye. Our Father, which art in heaven, not Hail Mary, full of grace. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. And you know what? When Christ comes back to this earth, that is going to be fulfilled. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Now, when they're talking about debts, they're not talking about just, you know, oh, well, I lent this person some money. No. No. I mean, if somebody, if you did lend some, somebody some money and they fell into hard times and it's not going to be a hardship for you to forgive them, but it would be really good to, to let them, you know, help them out. Yeah, you should forgive them the money. Just, you know, um, let me tell you a little story. My, uh, my father, he'll, if you asked him, he would tell you his best friend was a Jew. But this guy was not a money hungry. He, you know, my dad uh, got word that my mother had been in an auto accident. She almost died. She should have died. And uh, this uh, this this Jewish guy, he was a he. he I tell you what, he handed my dad three or four months worth of salary. 
cash. Hand, put it in his hand. He says, he said, Jack, he says, your wife's in the hospital. She, she might die. He says, you need to take care of your family and your kids. He says, take this money. It's a gift. He says, if one day you're ever in a position to pay me back, no problem. But he says, if you don't, don't worry about it. He says, you go be with your wife in the hospital. Take care of the kids. Take care of the rent. Take care of what you need. And send him on his way. And I'll tell you what, my dad loved that man more than anything, just about any anybody in the world. He's, you asked him who his best friend was, that guy was. When he died, my dad, he was touched, really, you know. And yes, I do believe there are real Jews in this world that love the Lord. Um, sadly... Well, it's just like uh, you go to churches. I, You know these mega churches with 5,000, 10,000 people in them? I doubt there's more than 50 people that would die for their faith in those churches. You know, how many true Christians are in a, a, those mega churches? Probably just a handful. You know? Do I think there are some real Jews in the world? Absolutely. But it's just, you know, it's God has his remnant. God has his remnant. And uh, what can I tell you? And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And it's not just money, people. Our debts, we owe a debt to God for our sins. So when people, we sin against God and people sin against us. And if you can't forgive the people that sin against you, why should God forgive you for the sins that you did against him, which are much worse? I mean, I know that my debt of sin to the Lord was huge, huge. I mean, you wouldn't believe some of the things that I did when I was in high school and, and before I came to the Lord. I was in tears knowing what a wicked sinner I was. So we have to forgive those that sinned against us for the Father to forgive us. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into... <laughs> All right, verse 13. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Verse 14, for if ye forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if ye forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. And, and what is trespassing? It's being somewhere you're not supposed to be. Let's face it, people. God does not want us to be in sin. That's a place we're not supposed to be. You know, when you're trespassing on private property, you're in a place you're not supposed to be. So, if you don't think trespassing is sin, uh, hold on, let me take a look real quick. Uh, one thing I love about the Bible, the Bible ex interprets the Bible. Paul, in Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 1, and you hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins. And you hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins. So that tells you right there, you're using dead in trespasses and sins in the same phrase. Okay? So... All right, let's take a look. Uh, trespassing. It's not talking about being on the wrong, somebody, your neighbor's property, fishing for catfish on his lake when you shouldn't be there. That's not exactly what they're talking about. All right. Uh, let's go to Luke. Now, we're talking about praying, right? Let's go to Luke chapter 18, 
starting in verse 10. Two men went up into the temple to pray. The one, a Pharisee. A Pharisee's a Jew, right? The one, a Pharisee, and the other, a Republican. Probably a Donald Trump supporter, right? Oh, oh, I'm sorry. A, and the other, a publican. Uh, for those of you that don't know it, a publican is a was a tax collector, a Roman tax collector. Modern day, he would be an IRS agent. Uh, you know, General Electric had, uh, I forget how many billions of dollars of revenue. Billions. A billion is a thousand millions. I think they had, I forget how many billions in revenues. But uh, they paid no, zero corporate federal income tax for like five years in a row. And oh, by the way, they, they used to own NBC Universal if memory serves me correctly. So that's why there was no stories about uh, how GE didn't pay any income tax, uh, corporate income tax for five years in a row. But God forbid you're a waitress that didn't pay tax on a couple hundred dollars. Oh boy, IRS will go after them. So two men went up into the temple to pray, the one a Jew and the other an IRS agent. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself. So here's the Jews. This is the prayer of the Jew. God, I thank thee that I am not as other men are. Extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even as this Republican, I mean publican. I fast twice in the week. I give tithes of all that I possess. And the publican standing afar off would not lift up so much as his eyes into heaven, but smote upon his breast. He hid himself in the chest, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, and this is Jesus speaking, I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other. For everyone that exalteth himself shall be abased, and he that humbleth himself shall be exalted. Exalted means to be lifted up, and abased means to be put down. So the Pharisee, he's going to be put down, and the Republican, the Trump supporter, I mean, I'm sorry, the, the publican, He's going to be exalted, according to Jesus, if you believe what Jesus says. All right, so let's take a look at, uh, hmm, I didn't copy down the thing. i got to look something up real quick. Okay, Matthew chapter 23. This is the uh, book that the so-called Messianic Jew tried to make me believe was written in originally in Hebrew, and then those pagan satanic Greeks turned it into anti-Semitism. You know, after listening to these Yeshua people, I will never again listen to anything and believe nothing ever again of what they say. I, I just... After listening to them, you know, and there was a while I was starting to listen to them, and I thought I could learn something from them. And then then the Lord got me by the throat, basically, on figure of speech, and uh, shook me up and made me think about it. Check this out. Matthew chapter 23, verse 1. Then spake Jesus to the multitude and the disciples, saying, the scribes and the Pharisees, the Jews, right? The scribes and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. All therefore, whatsoever they bind you, observe, that observe and do. In other words, what they tell you to do, do what they tell you to do. But do not ye after their works. In other words, what they tell you to do, do it, but don't do like they do. But do not ye after their works, for they say and do not. 
oh, they walk the walk. But they, you know, they'll talk the talk, but they won't, will not walk the walk. But do not ye after their works, for they say and do not. For they bind heavy burdens and grievous to be born and lay them on men's shoulders. But they themselves will not move them with one of their fingers. But all their works they do for to be seen of men. Oh yeah, everything they do, it's to, to show everybody else. It's a show. It's like watching TBN. It's like watching a Benny Hinn uh, show. The Benny Hinn show. But all their works they do for to be seen of men. They bake broad their phylacteries and enlarge the borders of their garments and love the uppermost rooms at feasts and the chief seats in the synagogues and greetings in the markets and to be called of men rabbi rabbi now let me tell you something rabbi means master these hebrew roots liars will tell you rabbi just means teacher it's just like when the Bible says to call no man on earth your father. Well, it also says not to call anybody a rabbi either. And what are these Hebrew roots and Messianic Jews? They always want you to call them rabbi. It's no different than calling a priest father. Okay? And if you don't believe me, okay, let's go back to verse 5 but all their works they do for to be seen of men they make broad their phylacteries and enlarge the borders of their garments and love the uppermost rooms at feasts and the chief seats in the synagogues and greetings in the markets and to be called of men rabbi rabbi but be not ye called rabbi for one is your master even Christ and all ye are brethren Did you catch that? But be not ye called rabbi, for one is your master, even Christ. Christ is our rabbi. He's our master. Not the Hebrew roots guy running around or the, the whatever. And all ye are brethren. Verse 9. And call no man your father upon the earth, Catholic priests. And call no man your father upon the earth. For one is your father which is in heaven. Now I'm sure Jesus is not talking about your dad, calling your dad father, okay? But he's talking about calling somebody on earth the Heavenly Father, or calling it basically reference to God. What does the Pope call himself? Holy Father. The only time a Pope is holy is when somebody's taken a gun and put a couple of bullet holes in him. I don't know if that's ever happened, but that's when he would be holy. Yeah, never mind. And call no man your father upon the earth, for one is your father which is in heaven. Neither be called, neither be ye called masters, for one is your master, even Christ. Christ is the only one that's going to be our master. Not, not a rabbi, not a priest. Verse 11, But he that is greatest among you shall be your servant, and whosoever shall exalt himself shall be abased, and he that shall humble himself shall be exalted but woe unto you scribes and pharisees hypocrites there's jesus calling these jews again hypocrites for ye shut up the kingdom of heaven against men what for ye shut up the kingdom of heaven against men for ye neither go in yourselves neither suffer suffer means allow neither suffer ye them that are entering to go in so these Jews, 
these hypocrites, they shut the kingdom of heaven up against men. They close the door. And he says, you're not going in, and you don't allow those that are going in to go in. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye devour widows' houses, and for a pretense make long prayer. Therefore ye shall receive the greater damnation. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye compass sea and land to make one proselyte. And when he is made, ye make him twofold more the child of hell than yourselves. They cross land and sea to make a disciple unto themselves. And when they've made him, he's twice the child of hell than they are. So, let's check this out. When we pray, we're supposed to pray to the Father in heaven, right? Very important, right? Um, we're supposed to acknowledge that his name's hallowed. We're supposed to pray that the Lord's kingdom is going to come, not only in heaven, but on earth. We're supposed to ask for our daily bread. We're supposed to ask for our forgiveness of sins. And we're supposed to for, uh, forgive those that sin against us. And if you don't think that's important, let me tell you something. Matthew chapter 6 and verse 14. For if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if ye forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. Mark 11.26 But if ye do not forgive, neither will your forgot Father, which is in heaven, forgive your trespasses. Luke 17.3 Take heed to yourselves. If thy brother trespass against thee, rebuke him. In other words, if your brother sins against you, rebuke him. And if he repent, forgive him. Okay? Very important. So, and forgive us our sins, for we also forgive everyone that is indebted to us. We're back in Luke chapter 11. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Okay? Very important. So, what can I tell you? These are, when the Lord gave us his prayer, the Lord's prayer, when he was teaching us to pray, you got to realize, like I've mentioned, Jesus was God in the flesh. You know, and like I said, there's the difference between the rest of the religions of the world that teach that man could become God, but only in Christianity does it teach that God became man. You know, I just, what is easier, for a man to become God or for God to become man? Is there anything too hard for God? Is there anything too hard for God? Think about that. That's the difference. And of course, the um, Judaism keeps looking for their Messiah. Well, I'll tell you people, the Messiah already came. And in the Greek, his name is Jesus, who is the Christ. Christ is the Greek rendering of the Hebrew word Messiah, or as they like to say, Mushaya. Well, it depends on which one you ask, you know, so. Well, I just wanted to, uh, like I said, thank you for your prayers, and uh, hopefully I can start getting back in the groove, so to speak, on uh, doing the Bible studies again. And, uh, just be careful with that uh, 
organized churches and be careful of the um, Hebrew roots people also and these Messianic Jews. You know, I would have a lot more respect for the Messianic Jews if they ever came out openly and condemned the Kabbalah and the Talmud. But they just don't do it. I, I just, I have... I have never, I've heard them privately and secretly almost condemn the Kabbalah and the Talmud. You know, it might be in the fine print on their website, like on the last page, like the second to last sentence. But I've never heard them openly condemn it and warn Christians to stay away from these, the heresies that are being perpetrated on them. I, I, it's just, you know, I just, I don't know. They're, it's it's as if, you know, they were like, well, you know, we, we don't want to drive any of the Jews away. What? If, if the Jews are getting into magic of, the, of Kabbalah, you better, you better rebuke them sharply and let them know they're on the road to hell. Jesus condemned the Pharisees over and over and over. And your Talmudic Jews are the direct, direct descendants. They are the direct descendants. They're the modern day interpretation of the Pharisees. The Pharisees used the Talmud and the modern day Jews used the Talmud. As a matter of fact, the Pharisees were the ones that wrote the Talmud. And for those of you that don't know it, the Talmud is the rabbi's interpretation of the Bible, the Torah, and the Tanakh, which is what we call the Old Testament. So, well, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor to Jesus, the Lamb of God slain before the foundation of the world. All glory, blessing, and honor to him in his name, in Jesus' name. Amen.